uh, father daughter dance on uh, Saturday when I get home. So you go back and do, going straight to that. Uh -huh. So what do you more look? Uh, so let's just start off with that. Then what do you more look forward to than like uh, getting in there on Friday, beating some butt, or <coughs> um, a daddy daughter dance? That's pretty cool. I, I, I look forward to my daddy daughter dance, man. Like uh, it's you know hopefully my face isn't too beaten up for it. But um, it was a couple years ago I fought. That was right after I fought Travis, like a week after I fought Travis, and had that big old ugly yeah. eye, and there was still a bunch of blood in there. And uh, we had daddy-daughter photos at, at my daughter's school. So I like did one with a big old pair of sunglasses on. She's like, Daddy, take your glasses off. I'm not embarrassed. And I was like, all right, little mama. And I did, so we have a picture like, with, glasses, with sunglasses on and one without them. Does she look at that like as her like badge of honor, like my dad's <clears throat> man? Um, you know, I think she's just really proud of me. You know, I think that's all it is. So... Like, I, I, it's, it sucks that I'm missing Valentine's Day with her today, but she's going to uh, Valentine's Day, Valentine's dinner with her grandfather, so not bad. Let's, uh, let's talk about your career trajectory, kind of, because, I mean, when you started out on The Ultimate Fighter, it hasn't been that long ago, but, but you've obviously done a ton since then, and now here you went from, like, kind of this unknown, kind of like the crazy guy in the house that they right. kind of made you out to be, and now you're coming off a win over Fedor, and you're, you know, trying to win a heavyweight title for Belter. It's been yeah. a crazy ride for you. Yeah, it's a long, strange trip, man. To, uh, but uh, you know, it, it's it, it comes with growth. It comes with um, you know certain levels of, of uh, individual and personal maturation as well. Um, yeah, I, I never expected this to be my career uh, or my lifestyle. I mean, hell, I've been in been fighting twice as long as I was in the, the NFL. You know, that's that's a trip, and I only got into fighting just so I could promote my supplement company, and that's really it. Like, it's pretty wild how things go, but. Um, you know, like as far as as far as uh, where I'm at now, I, I've I've put the time and effort into it. I look forward to the co competition on Friday. Where will be tough. Uh, I mean, he, he's never a slouch. He always comes, and um, you know, he he's got uh, he's got he's got he's got certain variables you have to worry about. He's also got certain variables that are somewhat predictable. So, you know, you just uh, if you fight him in a phone booth, that's your fault. If you uh, if you're long and athletic and rangy, which I try to be, that should give him some troubles. Were you um, surprised when they called and said that that was going to be the fight? Did you think maybe it would be Rampage or something since there was a little bit of Well, I asked him, how's, like, well, how's, how's that make sense? Like, Roy's arguably the number two guy in the division. How, how does that? Like, explain that to me. Like, is there any seating or you just, mm -hmm. like, what was the logic behind that? Uh, but, the, you know, the, the more I thought about it, the less I really cared. Like, either I beat Roy when I have a strap or I beat Roy to get the strap. Like, what's how difference does it make? Uh, so, I, I, you know, it is what it is. I, I'd have to beat him sooner or later anyways. So, let it be what it is. I'm Reasonable to it. assume that you just throw the first fight completely out the window and you guys are both different fighters than you were? That, that's how I feel about show. it. Like, I understand it's a rematch, like, on paper, but I, I don't really feel like it is. Uh, he might, sure. Uh, don't really care how he feels. But uh, I feel like I'm, I feel that uh, just the growth in itself. I've had 12, I've had, what, 200% more fights than I had at the time. And, you know, when I fought, when I had, when I fought Roy, you know, I had what six fights. Six, it was Roy's 24th or 25th. So he had a lot of experience in situations that I didn't. We also have a very different perspective on fighting. So, you know, it, it is. Um, it, it's in the record books that he beat me, knocked me down, first guy to TKO me. Good for him. Uh, but I, I don't really consider this a rematch. I think a lot of people may look at him as kind of like the aging heavyweight, but, and then forget that, I mean, this is your big year to turn 42, right? It is. Uh, you generally don't seem to feel like, like you're about to be 40 years old. I mean, that's kind of that magic number where people start, for athletes, where people start talking about, hey, how close is the end? But, yeah. but how do you feel right now? Well, I got that physical? question this week. <laughs> I got that, yeah, sure, like, you're going to get it be, more and more now. Yeah. I mean, what's that, what's you that know, it, it really, it, it, it doesn't bother me at all. Uh, I understand why the question is posed. Um, but it's, it's how much do I want to put? I don't have to fight. Financially, I'm okay. Like, and I have, I have plenty of opportunities and doors that are open. Uh, I choose it because I'm not done competing yet. And I feel that um, my body feels good. I don't take much beating. I, I, don't, I don't spar heavy. I, I, don't, uh, I don't take punches to the face or worry about brain trauma. So there, there's, there are certain things I do to take care of myself. And um, I think it's paid off. I feel like I'm still pretty athletic, pretty spry, pretty mobile, um, still pretty explosive. So, you know, if, if a t time comes where I don't feel that way, or if it's just time to hang them up, like emotionally I'm done, 
and I'll be done. I mean, people still consider you probably, you know, among the elite athletes, overall athletes mm -hmm. in, the, in the division. Wouldn't you say that? I'd say I should be one of, amongst the overall elite athletes in the entire sport, not just the division. So, I mean, from that standpoint, I mean, who cares about, about 40, right? Yeah, I totally agree. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I don't care about 40. I mean, other people do. I don't care about it. How big of a part has Tom Erickson been in this training camp? Uh, in this training camp, not so much. He's been gone. But like Coach Erickson and I stay in touch quite a bit. Uh, we, we're always involved. He writes in. He checks in. What's going on? He knows that I'm wrestling at Purdue quite a bit. So he, he's like, hey, you know, how, how's this defense going? How are your scrambles going? What's your transitions looking like? Are, are, you, are you spiral riding here? Are you doing this? Like, what, What's your variation of that? Uh, he also knows my team, Team 2 Ton. He, know, he knows them pretty well. Uh, so we asked about Charles and Butta and what we're doing there, how, how their pressure is, uh, their body locks over under, you know, blah, blah, blah. So Coach Erickson's very involved. It's just I haven't physically been, been around to work with him. Okay. Thank you. Matt, you're coming off a win off of Fedor and Manejo. Obviously, it's the biggest win of your career, the biggest name, one of the greatest fighters ever. You're coming into this tournament. Uh, you're considered by most as the favorite to win, the betting favorite to win the entire tournament, the betting favorite to win against Roy Nelson. Pretty much in the unofficial number one seed of the tournament. Any added pressure being the number one seed? No, really. Like that, I put so much pressure on myself, and I'm, I'm so used to being involved uh, on high end, high level athletics. That and pressure really, it's 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 an exogenous source. And if you turn a blind eye to that, then it really doesn't bother you that much. And so for me, like it's it's good. Like I feel like uh, I'm constantly underrated or under like under. Uh, undervalued, not necessarily and financially, uh, but everybody's undervalued financially, right? Sure. Um, but uh, it just, I feel like people don't take me that seriously. Uh, is that because of the ultimate fighter? Is that because of uh, losing the, to Brennan Shaw, you know, or whoever else, I, who knows? Um, but uh, I, I don't really care that much. So whatever it is, as long as when we're fighting, the person I'm fighting is like, oh snap, like this is much more real than I thought it was going to be, then I'm fine with that. No. Obviously, there's seven fighters remaining in this tournament. Uh, besides yourself, who do you think is the biggest threat? Six to you? fighters remaining in this tournament, right? Well, I mean, Rampage, Rampage got, got knocked out. Yeah, yeah. So um, not counting yourself, six yeah. fighters besides you. Yeah. Um, the. Uh, I'm sorry, what was the question? Who, who do you think is the biggest threat to you? Roy Nelson. Yeah, you know, like he's the next person, and uh, he's he beat me. So it would be foolish to say anybody else or to even think about somebody else. Now, when you look at the bracket, is there anybody particularly you're hoping to face? Roy Nelson. <laughs> really, I mean, really, that's, that's the answer. Like, it's, it's Roy Nelson, he beat me before. Um, it was uh, a situation in which I think I should have done better. Uh, so I look forward to proving to myself um, that I am the best heavyweight in Bellator. Now, if you win this tournament, do you, do you believe that this would crown you the number one guy in the world? No. no, no, I do not. Uh, Steve is the number one guy in the world, I and mean, I don't think anybody could argue that at all. I think it would be really dope to have a chance to compete against him. Uh, I, I'd really like if the Ali Act ever got passed. I think that'd be really dope, uh, and I think it'd be great for the fans. And then I'd find out, you know, are you really that good or not? Uh, but I think I, I think um, really you know, whether it's me or not, whether it's me or Roy or whoever else that that wins the tournament, um, I think it'd be great to be able to have like to 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 get rid of individual promotions where you can't compete against each other. I think that's kind of silly. Um, hell, even like the American League and the National League compete each other, you know? Like there's, it happens all the time in every other sport. Why not this one? It doesn't make sense. Sure. Now, obviously, the retirement talk been coming up, your journey kind of blowing off. Uh, speaking of your legacy, what would winning a tournament of this, you know, according to do for your legacy? Or is that something you need to think about? Well, I never thought about it. Um, I don't know. I don't know. And it, I don't really, I don't really care about, because I, I feel like I have so much, I have so many detractors, right? Like, I, I really, I despise the word haters, but like, I have so many people that really don't believe in me or don't want to support me. Cool. So I don't really, I don't, it's not a part to uh, appreciate them or, or to try to make them appreciate me. It's more just like, I'm going to go out, I want my children to be proud of me. That's what I really care about. Because as soon as I'm done being a personality, I'm getting off all social media. I can't wait to do it now. Right? I'm going to get off everything. I'm going to disappear in my, my, my 30,000 person town. And I'm going to chill. I'm going to help uh, coach whatever sport my kids are in. I'm going to live the dream. I'm not going to miss any kind of events like Valentine's Day ever again. Um, so I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know about my legacy. I don't worry about my legacy. 
uh, as far as the, the fighting public goes. But as long as my children are proud of the effort I gave and understand why I had to miss certain things in order to, to make a better lifestyle, that's all I really care about. Now, does your children watch the fights? Uh, they watch them on TV. Okay. Yeah. Live? Uh, yeah, yeah, they watch them. But the remote's held in hand by their mother. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I understand. Um, so obviously, you've already kind of established that you're not looking for Ashbury Nelson. Mm -hmm. uh, the other matchups that are coming up, Fedor versus Mir, do you have a prediction on that one? I think Fedor knocks Mir out. Simply, I, I think I think Mir's tough. Mir's a, a really big dude right now. He has some weight to lose, um, and uh, he's been out for two years. And I think Fedor is incredibly quick and very very explosive. So I feel that um, that mix of being out for that long and how quick Fedor is uh, is very dangerous. Uh, I don't know how Frank would get Fedor to the ground, um, and if it went to the ground, I, I mean, that's when the madness happens. I mean, who? Who in the hell knows what's going to go on? I think the MMA universe would implode. I mean, who knows? Uh, how about uh, Ryan Bader and Kimo? I think Bader wins. I think Bader um, cannot wrestle Mo. I think Bader's really strong in that way. Um, and I just, I just don't. Uh, but then again, I, I know Mo beat Bader in wrestling in, in college. So um, who was actually pointed out to me by Mo? Because uh, I told him I thought Bader was going to beat him on, on his radio show yesterday. But, uh, you know, I, don't, I, I, just, I think Bader's really solid. So I would, I would say Bader there. Now, you know, fans talk and media talk, it seems like the two picks are with you and, and Bader. Uh -huh. um, any, do you feel weird that the guys on the same side of the bracket at all? Like, or, oh, well, the winners of the tournament's going to come out of my bracket. Yeah, is it weird for that, certain. you know, you guys are on the same side of the bracket? Uh, I mean, there was no seating, you know what I'm saying? So there's, if there's no seating, then it's just, just the way the, the hats got pulled out, the names got pulled out of the hat. What's your official prediction for your fight against Roy Nelson? I win. I, I don't know how. Uh, I, I don't, I honestly, I don't really care how, right? Um, uh, he, he's tough. He's going to be around. You know, Roy's very similar, in my opinion, to Ali Thompson, right? Like, like they, they, not necessarily skill set wise, but just durability wise. Like, I hit Ali with freaking everything I could so many times in so many different angles, and he was still there. You know, he's just a tough nut to crack. So I, 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 I know Roy's that way. Roy, if he can, will be there until the third bell. And he'll just be hanging out, you know? So we'll see. I'm prepared for that. Like mentally, that's different too. Like I, most of my fights don't last that long. So like if somebody takes that whooping and they're still there, like I was frustrated against Ali. I was like, I even told my corner, I was like, what the hell? Like, how is he still awake? I don't understand this. Um, especially like in the start of the fight, like I need him in the face against the wall and he, went like that and his forehead like hit the, the mat like in the corner I was like oh just a couple more touches and he's done and then around and a half later he's still there <laughs> you know like just he's tough and Roy's exact same way do you even remember the last time you had to wait around to, to see what the judges were going to say it's been a long time it's, it was Chuck Congo yeah yeah like um six plus years right yeah six long, long time ago. ago almost made it with uh the one fight I don't count anymore with my eyes yeah. but um yeah I mean really uh, no, it's been a long time. I don't go to a decision very often, thankfully. I don't get paid by the minute, you know? Uh, do you have any of the guys at uh, Team Teuton that have any fights coming up or someone we should keep an eye on? Uh, no, I, I don't. I, they're, not, they're not fighters. They have oh. fought in the past, uh, but they're all regular dudes with regular jobs. Bud works at a factory. Charles is in sales. And uh, they make exceptions in their life to come in, leave their families, and, and help me train. Uh, and they're, Charles is... 6'1", 315, uh, a huge Greco, huge Greco guy. Um, wall takedowns, wall work throws, uh, somewhat of a shot guy, but has refrigerator strength. Has, can pick up a refrigerator and carry it a block if you ask him to. Um, but is the same way, he's a little bit taller. But is probably 6'2", um, 280, somewhere on there. And then Corn, Cornelius is probably 5'6", uh, but I'll call him 5'9". And um, he's about 295. And he's a, a collegiate wrestler, has a, a really good shot, uh, you know, um, a high crotch and an outside single and a blast double and switches from a high crotch to a blast double. And he's solid, man. So I feel like I've gotten about as good work as I can possibly get. So strength and weight uh, and wrestling ability should not be a factor in this fight for me. Wow, that's awesome. He's got a great team there. Yeah. Just an extra mic. Hey, there. <laughs> Thanks, man. Thanks, man.